What's up, guys? It's Shana, and welcome back to the Ehung Podcast. And this episode is brought to you by Property Guru introducing Bricks Home Report. So basically, this is a report that shows you the latest transaction price of any project in Malaysia. So whenever we are interested in a particular project, it's important to know what's the median price of the area, also the medium of the transacted price because we don't want to overpay for something. Even if we were to overpay for the project, we gotta know why. Then we can get all those information via their website for free. In case you need more details about the unit, for example, the unit number, which allows us to determine the orientation, also the floor height, we can actually purchase the report for 69 ringgit. And I'll just put a link down below, go check it out. And today we will be answering a question from email uh, this is from Dean. Hi, Sean. My name is Dean, age 33, single and working in KL City Centre. Here writing to you, seeking your advice or even motivational support regarding property and life. Been watching your video since MCO and learned a lot helpful tips and investment strategies. I currently own a 500,000 semi-D landed house near KLIA Sepang with my monthly installment around 2003. Although I am the owner and the paymaster, it doesn't feel like my house because my parents is here and my only left grandmother is also together. I own a small room and the rest is parent-like arrangement. While I understand among Chinese it's common to live together with parents, I, as Malay, the well-being of my wife or the future comes first. I can imagine the havoc. If my wife were to live together, also I need my own space and privacy. However, I believe because of my good deeds to my parents, I am blessed with better earnings. They say murah rezeki tolong ibu bapa. Hmm, first time I hear that. Uh, I'm earning monthly salary of 15,000. Wow, murah rezeki indeed. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's a contract job. It's been a few years with this job, but the uncertainty is still very high. So I'm very frugal with property investment. I managed to save up 200,000 in cash and been eyeing for auction property for years since watching your videos. But due to frugality and fixed parents' commitment about 4,000, including their insurance, parents' car and utilities, I've put a hole to my investment. I don't want to say that they are the burden, or a responsibility, but my brain sometimes call it a burden. How I wish my parents were in a better situation so I can invest in properties with no breaks. I've done a lot of research, a lot of back and pull on the choice of the next property plan next year. I will move out and live on my own, buy an auction 500,000 range unit near public transport, living there while open to rent. If there is tenant, I will move out and rent other cheaper place. But if there is no tenant, I will live there anyways. That's the exit plan. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, it's very straightforward. But thank you, Dean, for sending in the email. I feel you, bro. We are only like a year difference. And I guess this is what happens if you only have one son. I don't know. I don't know whether you have siblings or not. I'm just guessing, okay, based on the email. Okay, so let's have a recap first. 30 years old, working in KLCC, have a home in KLIA, Sepang, a semi-D, half a million semi-D, uh, monthly installment 2003, but it doesn't feel like home because the parents are inside, also the grandmother. And because of that, uh, he feels like he do not have a home or the home is not his. Every month, his commitment to the parents is about 4,000 including on the 2003 while well, then you give car some more insurance some more utilities some more but on top of that uh, your money income is actually 15,000 that's solid bro but it's on a contract job then you also manage to save up 200,000 in cash due to the uncertainty of your job what should you do because your plans is actually to buy a auction unit first uh kudos to you bro Lots of responsibility, lots of uh, what you call burden. Uh, but I guess from the sense of duty as a man, I think you're doing awesome. And sometimes when we think about like, when I give them 2,003 and I give them 4,000, right? Well, I can only say that you're doing really good as a son. You're doing your best as a son. And this is the lesson on the other side of the perspective is I would not want to be a parent like that right? Like, it's only going to be tougher and tougher for our next generation if you guys are going to have kids. Uh, imagine like houses right now, within a city center, half a million, you can only get like a two bader or a three bader, which is a smaller three bader apartment in the city. And without a five to six thousand income, you can barely afford it. So guess what's going to happen? 
20 years to come. Then our next generation also got to compete with AI, compete with a lot more elites. And in accordance to our Prime Minister, Malaysia is going to turn into a aging country because uh, a lot of people are above 65 already and they are going to be a burden. So this will be somewhat like the situation in China back then where you, this gentleman, have two parents to take care and since the grandmother is also long living, so another grandmother here, if the wife is the only daughter or the only son also, she will have the burden of the parents as well. So it means one income is going to feed two families, both of each family and their own children. It's very, very stressful. That's why a lot of people now rather not have kids because to raise a kid also, speaking from a father, is not cheap, but it's all based on the options that we want to give them, lah, of course. So my goal of property investment is so that I don't have to be like that. The goal of the channel has always been to somewhat enable everyone, every Malaysian, to own about two to three properties in a lifetime. No need a lot, no need 25 properties. Just two to three will do and you can buy one every 10 years. So when you are like 26, 27, get the first one for investment. 37, get another one as a home. Then you rent out the first one. Then by 47, you should be doing good already. You should have some savings, provided you don't splurge on cars and stupid things. Lah. <laughs> then here, you can get another one if you can afford to. If cannot, also never mind. But just do our best, okay? And what will happen is by 57, which is 30 years later, this will be fully paid. Another 67, this will be fully paid. 77, this will be fully paid. And let's say zero capital appreciation, okay? Zero capital appreciation. It's never going to happen, but just the safety factor for our future. Property A, B, C, let's say if you buy at 400,000, 500,000, 600,000. By 77, you will have 1.5 million of today's money. What's the future value of 1.5 million ringgit in 30 years time? I don't know, but at least you will have 1.5 million at least. And the only goal that we need to make sure is either we have the rent covering installment or we just buy one for our own stay and we just pay the installment and we will fully own three houses by 77 years old following the format of buying one every 10 years. If you are a little bit more capable like this gentleman here, Dean, he has 15,000, right? He can go way more but just that he has a burden. So to me, as an investor, is I don't want to be a burden. And only with property. Like, we also checked out the some retirement homes lately, the ads lah. So like a month, if you have two old folks going in, it will be like a clubhouse kind of setting where they will have friends, they will have activities, they can go and eat and chill. They will have a room for about five to 6,000 a month. And I made a comment about how if I were to rent out the two or three properties that I own, let's say one rent out 2005, 2000, 2005, right? Settle ready, right? So I will just use the rental as my income to pay for my lodging there, Gaudi. But a lot of people who wax me in the comment section saying that you are talking as if owning two to three properties is very easy. If you don't plan, it's never gonna happen. And in this case here, thank you for sharing your story because it's rather sensitive. A lot of people will not want to call their parents a burden. But it's a duty sent by the above, so it's your responsibility. And the above think that you might be capable, you will have the strength to do it, so it's up to you. But what I can do for my next generation is not be that burden. Instead, I would prefer to position myself to be a support, or we call it in Mandarin, Kao San, like a mountain of support for my next generation to climb. And this also links to another different topic because of the generational wealth that we also need to take note of. Just thinking about it, right? Malaysia is about like 60 years only after independence. And within this generation, we can already see the wealth gap between the poor and the rich. Isn't it crazy when people are complaining about how diesel is going to affect their livelihood, but you can see people lining up like mad to buy Apple products in TRX. You see what's wrong? We will have fresh grads here making 2008 after a degree and you will have people getting paid 28,000 just because their parents are the director of multinational companies and things like that. And we haven't reached the wealth yet. So a lot of fresh grads will start off their career with like one home for marriage, one for investment and one car, then you go conquer the world. That is their way of supporting. And some still need to be in this state where every month I still need to pay money for my parents, pay for their rent, pay for their insurance, pay for their utilities. And this is independent whether the individual, the candidate of child is capable of not. 
whether are they doing good or not this is regardless of ability you know just by pure support and pure strategy or planning the right planning we are able to put our next generation or our kids in a better position to succeed that is why i like property investment because it allows me to accumulate wealth and deploy strategically if you want to do that via any other investment vehicles is also fine but just that i prefer property investment because i understand it fully so the main issue here for dean will be the house that he bought doesn't feel like his and he would prefer to have i think he has a girlfriend which is the future wife right he needs his own space and privacy for that so if you were to ask your parents to move out it will be like a very bad thing in asian culture also not only chinese or malay like actually all asian right once you send your parents to old folks home it's like you why are you like that they raise you so hard you know there's still this concept about the society and here the advice would highly dependent on your relationship with your parents okay are you able to be very upfront very upfront with them about about money because the topic is actually one of the main taboos in conventional asian families so it's usually sex death and money these are the very sensitive topic within the family always so if you are able to have this conversation right i will argue why must they have a landed family number one why do you need so much space it's luxurious leh. i also have a house around klia area it's a terrace house two story and that is renting out for thousand five what do you guys think if you were to stay in the terrace house because you're three percent only man. why do you need so much space right thousand five but i will still pay you the same amount of four thousand so two thousand three minus thousand five you get extra eight hundred in allowance is it okay then if they were to move out then what do you do with the semi-D? Then you can actually set up your family within a semi-D itself because half a million for a semi-D landed house, I think it's a pretty solid deal. You can barely get an apartment in KL City Centre. So that's one way. Before making that decision, have a discussion with your old folks first. They can get really sensitive, okay? The second thing is just be status quo. You just let them be happy until their last day, right? Just do your duty every month, 4,000. Just leave it. But you you still have 11,000 minus off income tax. Still left like 8,000, which is a very high amount. But I'm just not too sure why are you obsessed with auction properties? That is my fear. If it's your third or fourth property, then I think it's fine. You have a place to stay. You know what you're doing. Maybe you invested in properties before already. Then you know all the trends the hidden things within investment within the auction property market first of all right a lot of people are just very intrigued by the listing price of the property and agents will always want to make it very exciting by putting in a market valuation so for example market valuation 500,000 now bidding price is 350 because usually auction property starts from 30 percent below the market valuation but what a lot of people don't want to see or they are just not informed about it do look at the final closing price meaning after bidding the final price right if you pay close attention to past auction properties most of them are about or over the market price due to several reasons like one the marketing tactic of the agent worked they managed to lure a lot of people to come and bid Okay, and within the auction house, let's say the bidding price is 350 and every candidate of bidders, they will increase like 1,000 or 2,000 depending on the auction house. And just for example, five people came and bid, okay, just, just merely five, uh, meaning the property is not very popular. Uh. Every bidders, we will add in 2,000. So 350, five bidder means extra 10,000 really. So we'll start from 360. Then one raise must be 5,000 or 10,000. 360, 370, 380, 390. And most of these are usually inexperienced or just like you being lured to the low price. So they will have their very own ceiling, but you just merely need one or two kiasu folks, right? To overbid the market. It's no longer about making the right choices. It's about ego already. Oh, I got more money than you. Then even if you win in such situation, right? You're winning a unit that you don't get to visit provided you know the right agents. You will win a unit where you will have a lot of hidden traps within again. For example, outstanding maintenance costs. You got to go to the maintenance office and ask for the outstanding maintenance costs. And some banks are willing to finance that amount. Some banks are not open to finance. And what if after you beat the property, the outstanding maintenance cost is 20 over 1,000? 
is as high as your down payment. Eh? Then what if there's a private caveat? Because it's not the obligation of the agent to find out for you. It's your obligation, your responsibility to know exactly what you're bidding for. And most of the time, these folks who are facing financial difficulties, only their units are being auctioned off. Ma. And most of the time, if they were to take private loan, there will be private caveats in place. And you need to settle that before banks are open to provide financing. But if you cannot sign the final agreement of the unit within a fixed period, I think it's 30 days, your deposit will be burned. Then most of the time, the unit condition is as is where it's basis, meaning you get the exact condition. There are some condition where it's fully furnished, but after they spend too much money on renovation, that's why no money will pay installment. So bonus to the bidder, but it can be the other way, where you have terrible condition of unit here, got a hole, the window not around, door frame not around, the unit was clearly being abused and things like that. Instead of auction, technically in Malaysia, we have four channels of buying properties. Number one, directly from developers, where we buy new, okay? Second, sub-sale, where we buy from directly from owners. Third, auction, where we buy from auction houses, distressed properties that you are eyeing right now. Number four is bulk purchase, which you join a property investment club. And because you are joining a community, they will go and shop for properties in a group. So that gives you a way better price compared to what the public is buying. But this happens to not all properties, only selected ones who is willing to work with these property investment clubs. Personally, I have bought new, I have bought sub-sale, I have bought investment clubs because I get equal opportunities of discounts, equal opportunities of financing without all the hidden risk. And this comes from a person who really loves the game, knows a lot about it. I am still very afraid of this auction property. So all I'm suggesting right now, right, Dean, is to not be too obsessed with only auction. It can be one of the channel, don't get me wrong, but why not explore sub-sales where you know perfectly that particular project is next to a TOD, I know exactly how it looks like, I get to visit the unit to get absolute certainty about it, the view, the neighbor, the condition, the community, the surrounding, where's the best Tom Yum, where's the best place to hang out around it, who are the main tenants, what's the existing rental rate, what's the existing market price, instead of guessing or take that high risk for an auction unit. Another one that I would strongly suggest you to do, which is to join the property investment club because it suits your timeline. Now you're stressed about the family, you're stressed about working because you're up to contract if you cannot perform next year, bye-bye. Where got time for research. Personally, for my last three purchases, I've got from this investment club. And this is not an obligation, so it's just a suggestion because if you were to join, you'll get suggestion of the available inventory that they have. That ranges from properties in Nilai, La, Cyber Jaya, La, KL City Center also got. And you get to pick from there. And if you don't buy anything, there's a refund policy as well. And by the way, they will have learnings. They will be able to advise you accordingly. So my entire spiel just now is just to advise you to think beyond just one channel of buying. Because it's capital intensive and the price of ignorance is very, very high. If you don't know what you're playing, right, you will lose a lot of money if you don't know how. How about playing the more secured game in sub-sales, but sub-sales you will need higher capital where you need to put upfront 17 to 18% for any property. So if a half a million property range, you will need to prepare like 90,000 upfront just for ownership no renovation yet. Therefore, I will suggest you to join the Property Investment Club. Equip yourself with knowledge and information first, look at the inventory and most of the property there when you buy, you don't have to cough up a lot of capital. Therefore, allowing us to save the capital for the renovation later so that their strategy of renting out where the rent can cover installment will work. This will be my suggestion to you, Dean. And that will be a move that I will personally take also. So I love my parents a lot. And if I can afford 4,000 for them, so I'll just assume that my income is 10,000 every month. While learning how to invest, while researching the options I have in terms of investment, I would personally move closer to city center, which puts me higher in terms of competitiveness, allows me to go to work faster, giving myself more privacy, more space, so I can perform better in my work. Maybe that will turn the contract into a fixed employment. Of course, not 15,000, but maybe 13,000, also very good. If not, also, I'll be closer to action. I'll be closer to opportunities. And as much as I love or we love our parents, they are retired. They are not working already. Sometimes there will be this gap in mindset, gap in thinking. As we are hustling, we are trying to gain more. We are trying to strive for excellence. They just chill. 
you bring them for breakfast, they just chill only. And since you can afford, in my opinion, treat the house as the last obligation of love because your remaining salary can clearly push you forward, can clearly make a difference moving forward. The only difference is you do not have equal risk to play. It means your cost of mistake is going to be higher in case anything don't work. Just imagine a wrong investment, then you lose your job, then the house how? Not only you go jobless, you can always find a new job and rent somewhere else, right? What about the old folks? So die die, you will need a job that pays about three times of 2003, which is like 8,000 at least. Urgently, if not, the old folks and your grandmother also got no place to stay. That is serious. And that will be the main difference compared to you and other young folks within the audience. But I am fully confident I am fully confident because you are so disciplined as you have managed to save up 200,000 in cash. So that clearly indicates in terms of mindset, you are there. Just that maybe due to information gap and knowledge gap, you are not as much as a risk taker. So the solution to your case is to get property deals where you don't have to use this 200,000 at all. And this will be the emergency fund for the old folks. Maybe half of it, like half you need to get married. Right, ma? <laughs> and maybe a quarter of it for a renovation for an investment property that you might stay yourself and rent out the other rooms and things like that. And that will be my suggestion, a very clear one. But for me personally, I would definitely move out. Like whether or not I have buy a new property. And if I were to invest in a property, I need not to stay myself. I can purely buy it for the intention of investment. I buy it to roll. So that gives me more options where I don't have to really buy an auction unit or a subsidy unit where I need the unit immediately. I can buy new built units within a bulk purchase format. Usually they will take like two to three years time for construction and handover. So if I were to just find a room in KL or a smaller unit in KL to live in myself, I get to have my own space and clarity and peace to focus on my work I let like this investment jalan every weekend or every fortnight I'll just go home and visit the old folks and that would be my suggestion and I guess that's all for this email Dean thank you very much for sharing your story with us I fully respect and I also understand the frustration that's why I also move out <laughs> And for those who have any questions about real estate, you just email me at T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G, T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G at gmail.com. You can just DM me on Instagram, I-H-E-R-N-G. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Ciao.